Hello, let's begin learning about Latin adjectives. Please turn to your notebook and begin a section of notes entitled Latin adjectives. As you know, an adjective is a word that describes a noun. It tells us about the size, the age, the number, something more about a noun that we didn't know before. For example, in our sentence, the sailor sees many roses in the large ancient gate, Many tells us about the number of roses, large tells us about the size of the gate, and ancient tells us about the age of the gate. Each of these blue words are adjectives that modify those nouns. Because they modify nouns, in Latin, adjectives will have the same three qualities of nouns. As you know, Latin nouns have the three qualities of gender, number, and case. Therefore, a Latin adjective will also have the same three qualities of gender, number, and case. So what do these look like in Latin? Just like with Latin nouns, adjectives are divided into different groups called declensions based on the endings that they use to tell us more about the function of the word in the sentence. One group is called first and second declension adjectives that use endings similar to first and second declension nouns to tell us about nouns in all three genders. The other group of adjectives are third declension adjectives. These use the same endings as third declension nouns to tell us more about other nouns. It is not always going to be the case that an adjective and a noun have the same ending because a third declension adjective may tell us about a first declension noun, or a first declension or second declension adjective could tell us about a third declension, fourth declension, or fifth declension noun, for example. Since we only know first declension noun endings, we will only be focusing on first declension adjectives, so ones that are used to modify feminine nouns. When we look at first and second declension adjectives, dictionary entries, they will follow this pattern, magnus, magna, magnum. They will always end in us, a, uh, um. That us ending tells us that this form is used for masculine, singular, and nominative words. The a uh, ending is for feminine, singular, nominative words. Magnum that M-U-M ending is for neuter, singular, nominative words. You may recognize that that A ending is similar to first declension nouns. And you may know, or you will know soon, that the us and the um ending are used for second declension nouns. The, this similarity is why these are called first and second declension adjectives. When you do a vocabulary quiz and need to provide the dictionary entry for first and second declension adjectives, make, a, make sure you write out the full magnus, magna, magnum ending or form that uses the full dictionary entry, so one that includes the masculine singular nominative, the feminine singular nominative, and the neuter singular nominative forms like magnus, magna, magnum. As you see, each of these forms has its own gender, number, and case. So how do you know which endings to use for these? Well, in Latin, if an adjective modifies a Latin noun, the adjective and the noun agree in gender, number, and case. In other words, the Latin adjective takes its gender, number, and case from the Latin noun that it modifies. Let's look at an example. If we want to modify the noun porta portai with the adjective magnus magna magnum, we can figure out its forms for all of its cases and numbers with this chart. First, we should decline the noun porta portai. Please pause the video and do so. You should have come up with these endings. Remembering that you get the base for your noun by taking your genitive singular form in your dictionary entry and removing the case and number endings, so port. And then you add the case and number endings 
that are based on its declension. Because it ends in AE, you know that this noun is a first declension noun. Therefore, you use porta, portai, portai, portam, porta, portai, portai, portarum, portis, portas, portis, portai. Now, it's time to add in our adjective. Latin adjectives follow that same pattern as Latin nouns. You take the base and then you add, add your case and number endings. To determine the base of a Latin adjective, you start with your nominative singular feminine form, magna. Just like with nouns, you remove your case and number ending, the a. So for this example, it would be m-a-g-n. You can write this base down for every single one of its forms because it will not change. Because it tells you the meaning of the word. It means large. Next, we need to add on our case and number endings based on the gender, number, and case of the noun that it modifies. As you know, porta is feminine. That means that we use the second form, your feminine singular nominative form of magna. You can use this as your first example and just move that a down to the nominative singular form. And because this is a first and second declension adjective and we're using our feminine singular nominative forms, um, you just use first declension endings for this because most first declension nouns are feminine. So you can add in all the rest of your first declension endings. Please pause the video, add on those endings, and then resume once you have it completed. Hopefully, you use these endings. Please check your work and then resume. Okay. So now, let's apply this to our Latin sentence from the beginning of the video. The sailor sees many roses in the large ancient gate. Since Latin adjectives take their gender, number, and case from the noun they modify, we need to understand what noun each of these adjectives modifies if we're going to translate the sentence into Latin. So, what word does each of the adjectives modify? Pause the video and check. Right, many modifies roses, and large and ancient modify gate. So now, the next question is, what gender, number, and case would each noun be in a Latin sentence? Please parse each noun as you pause the video, and then resume the video when you're ready. Right, sailor will be masculine, nominative, and singular because it is the subject of your sentence. And sailor is a masculine noun, and there's only one sailor. There are many roses, and it's the direct object of the sentence, so roses will be feminine or accusative plural. Rosa, rosai, is a feminine noun, so it will be feminine. For gate, it is the object of a preposition in. The Latin word for in is in, and this is a preposition that happens to take the ablative case as its object. Therefore, gate will be in the ablative case. There is only one gate, so it is singular, and porta portai is feminine. Now that we know what gender, number, and case each noun will be in our sentence when we translate it to Latin, the next question is to actually modify these nouns with the appropriate adjective. So, nauta translates for sailor, widet translates seas, rosas for roses, in for in, and porta for gate. It's your turn to add in the appropriate adjective using their dictionary entries of multus, multa, motum for many, magnus, magna, magnum for large, and antiquus, antiqua, antiquum for ancient. Pause the video, add in the adjectives, and resume when you are ready.
Hopefully, you found that multos will modify rosas, and magna and antiqua are the proper forms to modify porta. In this example, the, exa the adjectives multos, magna, and antiqua will go before the noun that they modify. This is because they are adjectives that show the size, the number, or age of a noun that they modify. We can also do this with adjectives like my and your, meus, mea, meum, and tuas, tua, tuum. These are the adjectives in this chapter. Most of the adjectives in this chapter actually go before the Latin noun that they modify. This is not normal in Latin. Usually, the adjective follows the noun in Latin word order. You also see in this sentence that the adjectives have the same endings as the noun that they modify. Remember, this will not always be the case. For example, sailor is masculine. If it were going to be modified by the adjective magnus, magna, magnum, we would use that first dictionary entry form, magnus, because that is the masculine nominative singular form of that word, and magnus and nauta would not end in the same ending, but we know that magnus would modify nauta because they have the same gender, number, and case, masculine, nominative, and singular. So now it is your turn to check your understanding. Please answer these three questions. Once you, you are done answering them, please call me over or bring the answers to me and I will check them for you. Then you can get started on your homework. Thank you, and if you need to review parts of this video, please do so to help you answer these questions. Good luck!